because when he heals you it gets rid of that anger it gets rid of that sense of low self-worth and all of that stuff it gets rid of all the pain that's down on the inside stuff that the devil can use against you so it's so important to get healed because when I get healed then I get freer and things become more clearer to me through the Living Word Healing and Restoration Ministry. It was a healing of my digestive system. When I was younger, I used to have a lot of stomach problems. I would eat certain foods and then I would wake up with stomach pains and sometimes even, even throwing up. As I got older, it would happen occasionally, but since I've experienced it so much, it was just the norm for me. Traveling was when I would have the worst symptoms. By the time I would get to where I was going, my stomach would be so bloated that I looked pregnant and I couldn't even eat and it was just really uncomfortable. One day I started feeling some movement around in my stomach and I went to the doctor and he told me that my intestines was moving around in my stomach. He didn't seem concerned and he didn't give me any medicine or anything so I guess I just had to deal with it. Then I started coming to services at Living Word Healing and Restoration and I remember a few times that the apostle said that God wanted to heal his people of digestive issues. And I remember being a bit surprised thinking that God is so big, is he really that concerned about something that seems so small? I mean, it's not small to the people that are going through it, but when I used to think about God, I would just imagine things like partner Red Sea or raising people from the dead. Those are the kind of things that I would associate him with. But I was just a beginner in the faith, and I was new to it, and I didn't quite understand that God loved his people so much that he is concerned about everything that we're going But the best for us, and he wants his people to be healthy and whole. So the apostle did an altar call, and he asked if anyone had digestive problems to come receive healing. There were quite a few people who did go to the altar, but I didn't go because, like I said earlier, that I had stomach issues so much that it just was what it was. I remember Pastor Wanda saying that there's someone else that's supposed to be up here, but no one else went. There were a few times that I remember the apostle saying that God wanted to heal people of digestive issues. People always went up there for healing, but I wasn't one of them. And one day I was having a conversation with some family members, it was my sisters, my mom, my daughters, and my niece. And I don't know how we got on the issue about stomach problems, but we did. And a lot of us were having some of the same issues. And then my mom tells us that she's had digestive issues since she was a kid. And I was like, digestive, pro digest uh, digestive problems? So that's what my issue is. Then I started telling them about the church services and about Apostle Herring talking about healing and how God wanted to heal people of digestive problems. And I told him that the next time he said it, that I was gonna go to the altar and receive my healing. Not too much longer after that, during uh, a Wednesday Bible study, uh, he said it. Um, I had my mind made up that I was going to that altar and I was gonna get my healing. But he didn't say that God wanted to heal someone of digestive problems. This time he said that God is going to heal someone of digestive problems. He didn't do an altar call that time, but I was open and I was determined to receive my healing. Soon after that, I went on a trip to New York. When I got there, my sisters and my nieces were complaining about the stomach issues due to traveling. And that's when I noticed that I didn't have any symptoms, my stomach wasn't bloated, I had no discomfort and I was able to eat. 
I told him about the healing that I received by just being open and believing, and I even suggested that they come to Living Word and receive some healing. There were times when the symptoms did try to come back, but I remember the apostle saying that it may happen, but if it does, keep believing that you're healed, and I did. They went away almost immediately, and it started to happen less and less. Then I noticed the symptoms had stopped altogether. Until the apostle asked me a few weeks ago, was I still healed from digestive issues? And then I knew that he was going to ask me to do a testimony about my healing. So did the enemy because the symptoms came back shortly after that. That digestive symptoms stopped immediately because I remember what he said and I claimed my healing. But then the enemy started coming at me in other physical ways. Once I got a definite date about doing the testimony, uh, my throat started hurting, but I refused to accept strep throat. And I know that it was strep throat because two people in my same household was diagnosed with strep throat. And then my eye started itching, but I refused to claim pink eye. And I knew it was pink eye because again, two people in my household both received pink eye. I decided that no matter the symptoms, whether it be a scratchy throat, itchy eyes, stomach problems, or something more serious, that I'm still claiming that by his stripes, I am healed. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he may show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should do what? Any man should boast. My God, okay, I want you to turn back to Romans chapter 11 one time. All right, you there? All right, look at verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Are you with me? Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God sees us, God sees us as perfect through the righteousness of Christ, right? He sees us perfect. He doesn't see us like we may see ourselves, right? Okay, now the devil is going to come tell us just the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, all he want to do is point out our failures and works, right? Yeah. You ain't marrying up. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. Yeah. Well, we don't have to listen to that, right? I mean, I'll tell you something that, um, but there can be some hindrances to receiving this grace, right? Yeah. And as I was thinking about that, let me take a moment. Okay, I'm on the air, but... Uh, Oh, uh, I was talking to God about it. I said, God, what? Why is it sometimes not easy to receive the grace of God? So he took me back. Now, I don't think I've shared this one before. So hold your seatbelt. So I was in the sixth grade. I think I might need to get back up here, am I right? I was in the sixth grade, and I had a fight with a, a, another young man. He was very picky. Just, I mean, just he really was the class dude that picked on people. He was about my size. So he started picking with me, and I got upset with him. And so we got into a tussle. And so he pinned me up against the wall. And so 
I couldn't break free. And I had the funniest feeling. I was angry and couldn't break free. He had pinned me up. And I finally broke out of it. And, you know, we had our tussle and so on. But God took me back to that moment. And let me tell you something. I actually felt anger. Are y'all with me? I, I, I don't know if I can talk to y'all. Easy. <laughs> but here it is years and he takes me back to a situation like that. Now I said there are, can be some hindrances to grace. All right. To receiving grace. Then I went back to the fourth grade. When I was in the fourth grade, this, this lady that was a teacher, I, I, I'm so tempted to come down here, but <clears throat> that lady called me out, embarrassed me, called, said some negative things to me before the whole class. I was humiliated. I was numbed. Then also he took me back to, with my father, how... I was always, you know, I won't say favorite, but uh, pleasing to him. And I did one thing wrong. And he was angry enough to kill me. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. So it was like the Lord was showing me how I, in my own understanding, needed to prove Y'all got to hear me. It wasn't easy for me to accept grace because I needed to prove that I was not what was labeled. And so the grace was too easy to accept. It, it didn't give me a chance to prove that I'm a good person. It was like you're good because... Or you're this because of God and not because you're, I needed to prove something. This thing in my past was interfering with the grace that is free. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And so it was like, because I was asking God, I said, God, what are these hindrances at time for us to want to prove ourselves? But he said to me, this is years ago, when he said to me, oh, even more recently, he says, it's your history, it's your background that causes you some time not to want to accept the simplicity of what God has done for you. You feel the need to want to prove yourself because, oh, yo, I tell you. And so as he began to minister healing to me, the anger toward the guy that pinned me up against the wall and you know, I felt anger at this day and time. I was like, God, I... so we don't know what's in us. We don't know the pain that we've come through and the traumas when somebody humiliates you before your peers. You don't, you don't know what that does to your sense of worth and makes you angry when it brings shame upon your life. But the Savior knows. Hallelujah. He knows all of that stuff. Hallelujah. And so you can come to him and he will. That's why healing is so important. Because when he heals you, it gets rid of that anger. It gets rid of that sense of low self-worth and all of that stuff. It gets rid of all the pain that's down on the inside. Stuff that the devil can use against you. You hear what I'm saying? So it's so important to get healed. Because when I get healed, then I get freer. And things become more clearer to me. I said, God, this is something else. But this, who glory, this great, kind, compassionate Savior. He won't give up on you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. He won't give up on you. Others may not understand you, but God, because he knows your history, he knows your background. He knows, hallelujah, what went into your hurts and in your pains. And so he doesn't treat you like you deserve to be treated. 
He's a good savior. He's a good God. Ah, Jesus. So he says, by grace are you saved. You don't, you don't need to prove anything to God. You don't need to strive to merit any blessings or favor. You have it by faith. If you can believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the bottom line is says you've not received that spirit of bondage again. Making you afraid. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to fear because everything to be known about you, God already knows. But here's the goodie. He loves you just like you've done everything right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that okay? Is that okay? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So can I encourage you with this? Don't spend no more time trying to prove how good you are. Don't do it. Embrace what he's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says... Paul said in Galatians 4, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those that were in the bondage. Working so hard to be accepted of God, to, to redeem them, to set them free from this thing. And then he says, and because your sons... The validation. God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. That's why you cry, Abba, Father. Because you have the spirit of his son. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to help me praise the Lord here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Paul went on in chapter 8 and says, There is therefore, as a result of all that happened in Calvary, there's no condemnation to them in Christ. If condemnation come, it ain't coming from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It may be coming from some past hurt. It may be coming from some from wrong way of thinking. It may be coming from the enemy. But it's not coming from Jesus. You ought to give him some praise. God is good. God is good. The Bible says rejoice ye righteous. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see why we can rejoice always? Hallelujah. So everything that's thrown upon us, you rejoice. Because of who you are and because of whose you are, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to look at somebody and say, therefore, serve the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. I remember in 1987, striving so hard to please God. The devil would always take advantage of it because he knew that I could never be justified. By trying to get good enough. He knew that. And so as long as things I was doing good, I could be happy. 
But when I wasn't doing good, I wasn't feeling too happy because it was works. Isn't that right? But then, 1987, God said this to me. He said, son, he said, you are perfect through the righteousness of God. And I thought, what? That's what he said. God does not see us the way we see ourselves. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. It's all right. And everything's going to be just fine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep on believing. Keep on rejoicing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I I wonder if you'll just stand with me. Let's just come on and give God some glory in this place. He's... God is deserving. He's already done the work through us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we magnify you. We magnify you. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. For you are great and great to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now what this is supposed to do is to drive away guilt and feelings of condemnation. We're not condemned. They that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You are blessed whether you got anything or not. You hear what I'm saying? It's not things, it's not people. You are already blessed. Hallelujah. Give him some praise like you believe that you're blessed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 God ain't putting no guilt on us. He doesn't do that. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. For driving away guilt today. Feelings of condemnation. And we lift our heads and lift our hands. And magnify the Christ. The Son of God. And knowing whose we are. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. By one man sin entered the world. And so by one man. Righteousness came. Ah, I want you to. I want you to look at your neighbor standing right beside you and says, neighbor, Neighbor. did you know know you are righteous? righteous. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, Yerebosha. I got I got one more thing to tell you. Look at your other neighbor beside you and say, neighbor, get off that performance track. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Don't you feel the difference? Don't you feel the difference? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. 
I don't know about you today, but you may be like I was. Maybe you were like I was. Maybe someone has had some traumatic experiences. Maybe somehow life made you very angry. Maybe somebody told you you would never amount to anything. Maybe they made you feel like you need to prove yourself. But I want you to know that Jesus accepts you just like you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're here today, first of all, if you're not saved, then heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're not saved, Jesus wants you to be saved. He wants to come into your life. He wants to show you life. Hallelujah. He wants to give life. 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 He said, I've come that you might have life. Fellowship with God. Holiness and light. I come to give it to you. Ah, yes, Lord. And you may be struggling and you feel like every time you put a foot forward, Satan tries to knock you back. But today, understanding that Jesus says, you can make it because I've overcome the world <coughs> and you're going to overcome. But if you need some strength today, just come and let him give you the grace and the strength that you need. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you now. We honor you for what your son did. He brought us out of darkness. He brought us into light. Thank you for caring for us. If there's anyone, Lord, that feels guilty, thoughts of condemnation, tries to overwhelm, minister freedom now to them. As the 